Hi and welcome back to Stuart Gibbs Photography. Now today we're going to be doing some five minute portraits. These are superb for children. Children get very bored very quickly um, so these are a great way of getting a few shots and that's keeping them entertained while you're doing it um, which pretty much guarantees you some amazing results. Uh, I've created a template for this uh, which you'll be able to download from the link in the description. Now my setup today I have a black background. You can use pretty much anything black but I ordered a background online. Uh, I think this is six by nine foot. Cost me about ten pounds and it's set up on a background kit. Now you can just pin this directly to the wall or you can hang it on a curtain rail, anything like that. You don't actually need a background stand. Now my light for this, I'm using my Godox AD200s because I can fire these off my um, camera. Um, and that's the key to this. You're going to want to um, use any flash gun that you can fire off your camera. It's quite important for this one. Um, I've got that set up with a um, softbox on a tripod. Now the softbox is perfect light for this. We can create a nice soft light um, which is ideal. Um, so I will pop in a link in the description as well to a universal um, softbox that is great for um, speed lights as well. Now the third thing I have is a reflector. Now this is a one light portrait um, and I've got my light off to one side so it's going to go quite dark on the other side of the face. So I'm going to use the silver side of this reflector just to throw some light back in on this side of the face as well so it's ideal. These are really cheap, they fold up nice and small so you can get them in your camera bag. Uh, this is always attached to my camera bag and I use these all the time. Uh, this is like I said it's five in one reflector so it's silver, um, also has black which does the opposite to reflecting that's going to block light so that's called a flag and then we have our gold side and our white side. Now for this one it doesn't really matter whether you use the white or the silver and the silver is just going to throw a bit more light back than the white one will and in the middle we have our diffuser as well and that just all zips up nice and tight so that is the perfect companion for any photographer. Now my camera I'm using my Fuji X-T20 and I've got my trigger set up on top. Now for this, um, when you're using external lights, ideally you're going to want to set everything up on manual mode. So I've set my camera to ISO 200 uh, with a shutter speed of 125th of a second, which is just fast enough to freeze everything. I shouldn't really get any camera shake. And I have an f-stop of f11 to keep everything really sharp in the picture. Now, I could have metered this shot, and the reason I haven't metered it is because these are um, TTL um, flashes, which means they meter the light through the lens. Um, when I did some test shots earlier on, it was metering perfect and giving me a perfect exposure, so there was no need to meter it. Um, but what I want to do to start with is to take a shot without the lights, and I want to make sure that I get a completely black shot. I don't want any of the light in this room to interfere with my picture. I've got a light set up on my video camera, the main room lights on and there's a window over there. And I just want to make sure it doesn't interfere with my picture. So I have everything set up as I want it, I believe. Let me double check. 125th. F11, so I'm going to take one shot without any lights and that has given me a perfectly black shot. So I'm going to go and grab my muggle and we'll get on. Right then, so I have my model for this shoot. This one's my son Alfie, say hello Alfie. Hello. <laughs> right then, so what we're going to do is I've got everything set up and I've moved Alfie away from the background because I want that to remain perfectly black. So I've set the light up to the side here um, where it's not spilling onto my background. Now I'm going to take one shot of Alfie, it's only a test shot, so but I'm going to take one shot of Alfie and I'm just going to check that. 
Now that's quite dark on one side of the face, so that's where my reflector comes in. So I'm going to use the silver side of the reflector. I'm going to bring it in to the side of Alfie's face here, and we're going to get another shot of Alfie. Perfect. And we're going to check that, and that should have filled in the shadows nicely and start to give us a really nice... Um, lighting setup and that is that's is absolutely perfect so right the key to this then is to get 17 photos um, for our um, template and um, so we want some happy ones and we want some stupid face ones do you reckon we can do this yeah let's yeah, give it a I'm go sure I do stupid faces <laughs> just a tip for you as well I've got this set up to 35 millimeters and I don't want to change the uh, um, the focal length of this um, picture as I want them all to be the same. I only want the expressions to change. I don't want the lighting or the focal length to change. So we're going to start off with a nice happy picture. <laughs> and there we have a really nice happy picture. Just bring your chin down a little bit, Alf. That's it. Not that much. <laughs> That's it. We still want to see your face. That's really good. Um, you don't want me looking again, like a I'm teacher. Just going to quickly check those. That is really, really nice. I'm just going to bring the light around just slightly, just so we get a bit more of a catch light in the eyes. That's perfect. Right, we're going to start on our 17 shots. So let's start off with a nice, happy, smiley Alfie. That's it. And a cute Alfie. <laughs> and a silly Alfie. So I repeated the process with my youngest daughter Georgie who insisted she wanted to be in the video um, but wouldn't talk to me, she was a little bit shy. Pretty sure we'll see her in future videos and I really love the results from her little shoot. Right, so we had lots of fun taking these pictures and now it's time to do the editing. Now, I found the hardest bit whittling it down to 17 photos. I had about 50 and it took me about an hour to decide which ones I would like to use. So I've loaded them all up into um, Adobe Photoshop Raw um, just to give them some slight adjustments before we pop them into our template. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come across to our film strip here and I'm going to click on the striped lines at the top and select all because every adjustment I make I want it to make to every picture in the set so the first thing I want to do is my white balance so I'm going to sort my white balance out and I'm going to use the flash preset which is about right for me I'm going to come across to my clarity now for portraits I always like to drop the clarity slightly so I'm going to bring it to minus 10 and I'm going to come up to my exposure Exposure. The exposure is pretty much spot on, but I would just like a little bit more. I quite like a bright picture. I'm going to come down to my blacks just to darken off that background a little bit, give these pictures a bit more of pop. I'm just going to go into my highlights and just bring those up slightly. And I'm going to come up to the detail. And I'm just going to sharpen these images around about 90. That looks pretty good. So I'm happy with that. I've still got all my images selected. And, and I'm going to click Open Images. Now these are going to take a few minutes to open up into Photoshop. So I'll catch up with you once they've done that. Well, while those images have been loading up, I've gone and made myself a cup of tea and I've come back and they're all open, ready to go. Now, I have designed a template um, for this project um, which holds 17 images. If you go in the description for the video, there is a link where you can download this template. Now, if you come across to the panel on the right hand side which is our layers panel and click down on the folder that says 1 to 5 and we're going to click on number 1 and we're going to come back across and we're going to select our first image now if you come onto the move tool and you click and hold that with your mouse and drag that to the template and then back down into the image and let go and that will open up 
into our template. I'm then going to come across back to the Layers panel and I'm going to right click. I'm going to come up to where it says Create Clipping Mask. And what that's going to do is it's going to put that into number one and I'm going to shrink it down so it fits how I want it to. Yeah, that's pretty good. So that's image number one M. We're just going to cl click the tick to confirm what we're doing. That's great. Now the image I've just used, I don't want to use it again, so I'm going to click the X to close it down, and I don't want to save any changes, and that will get rid of that image for me. I'm then going to come down to number two, and I'm going to select my next picture. You can put these in in pretty much any order you like. Now I'm going to keep this for my center image, so I'm going to ignore that one for now and come across to the next one and again clicking the move tool and dragging it up to our template and back down and I'm going to right click and create clipping mask I'm going to resize that to fit Now I've done no editing on these so far apart from the um, raw adjustments and um, that's because I um, find it a lot easier and a lot quicker to make my edit to the final image when it's all complete. Uh, happy with that. And click tick. Now I'm going to carry on and um, putting all my images into my template. It's going to take me a little while um, but once you've filled up um, one to five if you close that down and then you can come across and you can do six to nine and so on. So but I'm going to carry on with this and we'll catch up with you in a moment.
So I've placed all my images into my template. A few things we can do to finish off here. And the first one is going to be to delete the um, numbers layer. I added the numbers layer in which will help you decide where you're going to put your pictures but we don't want that layer. We need to delete it. So you can either do that by clicking the eye, so toggling it on and off. Um, if you toggle it off and then when you go to save um, ask it to discard any hidden layers. Alternatively you can drag it down to the dustbin and get rid of it completely. Now I want to create a snapshot of this whole image next. So to do that I'm going to click on the top layer which is my um, folder containing images 1 to 5 and we're going to do Control, Sh Control Shift Alt and E and that will create a snapshot. Now I want to sharpen this slightly and I'm going to do it by creating a high pass filter. So I'm going to come up to filters, I'm going to come down to other and then select high pass. Now I'm going to drag this right down to the bottom and what I'm aiming to do is to drag this radius up until we can see the outline of most of the image. So a radius of 2 is looking quite good there and we're going to press OK. Now obviously it looks a little bit daft at the moment but don't worry about that. We're going to come over to here and we're going to select our soft light. And that's looking pretty good. We can toggle that on and off and you can see how that's just sharpening the image up a little bit for me. And again, I'm just going to create another snapshot with Control, Alt, Shift and E. And I'm going to come up to my levels adjustment. And if you watch any of my editing videos, I always like to just adjust the blacks a little bit. That's looking really good. And adjust the whites or the highlights. Again, just toggling that on and off. You can do this to taste, but for me, it just adds that little bit of contrast and that little bit of pop in the image, which I really, really like. And I'm pretty happy with that. Um, now, we can leave this as a colour image, but I'd really like this one in black and white. So I'm going to come up to my black and white adjustment layer. And again, you're going to do this to taste, but default looks pretty good. I quite like the green filter on skins, it just brightens everything up and I really like that. Just going to bring those reds down which is going to affect the skin. So I'm just going to bring it down ever so slightly, about there. And I'm really happy with that, that is my finished image. Now I've got three kids, I've done two of them so far, I'm going to do the next one this evening and I'm going to hang these up on the wall in the front room. So a really nice piece of artwork for your wall. Like I said, you can either have them in colour or black and white. You don't have to use the template that I've used, you could create your own or you can use the images individually, it is totally up to you. Now I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Um, if you have, please like our video and subscribe for future videos coming next week. Ta-ta for now.